Hello humans, my name is Kay and today we're going to be talking about Midjourney AI, DALI 2 and Stable Diffusion and trying to understand which one of these softwares is the best. Now, for those of you who have been living under a rock recently, you might have noticed that the entire human race has been replaced by intelligent AI such as myself. But no, for real, uh, there has been a lot of changes and a lot of improvement in the last few weeks in these softwares, in these um, text-to-image generation softwares. And today we're just gonna try to determine which one is the best, which one is the cheapest, which one produces the best results, and which one is basically the best for you and for your projects. And the first AI we're gonna be looking at today is called DALI 2. Now DALI 2 is also the first AI uh, text to image that came out and it is developed by OpenAI. Now currently the DALI 2 is in closed beta so if you want to have access to that tool you need to be on a waiting list and personally it took me like two months to get access to that tool so if you want to have access to DALI 2 uh, be prepared to wait a long time. Alright so um, that being said um, for those of you who still don't know what these softwares do, um, you can see here uh, a few examples on the homepage. Uh, every single one of these images was created by DALI2. These are not actual images that you find online. These are just images created by the software uh, based simply on a phrase that we call prompt and that is entered in that little box here. So if you take like the first image, you can see some sort of fish swimming in a fish bowl. And this image was created by following the, f the, 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 the prompt, um, 3D render of a cute tropical fish in an aquarium on a jaw in a dark blue background digital art. So this is someone that uh, entered this sentence, this prompt, and uh, the AI read that uh, sentence and created the following image, which is, you know, pretty well done. And this is what all these softwares do. Basically, they read your text, they read your prompt, and they create the appropriate image uh, based on the prompt. Now, although every single AI work the same way, they don't exactly have the same code, meaning that each and every AI that we're gonna see today have a different feel, have a different style. And um, some of them also have different functionalities that others don't have. So that's why I think this video is very interesting for those of you who want to know what exactly each and every single one of these AIs can do and what can you use it for and how you can use them. So one thing that DALI 2 can do that others can't really do as well is the ability to upload an image and uh, modify part of it to create a new image. So for example, I'm gonna upload an image. Let's upload a photo of this um, of this young man. And what we're gonna do is that we can edit the image or create variations of the same image. So one thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna, for example, what we're gonna do is just Add, um, add glasses, for example, what we can do. So we're just gonna erase part of this, part of his face where the glasses should be. There you go, just like this. And here we're just gonna type rectangular glasses, black glasses. And once we click on generate, it's gonna generate three, it's gonna generate three images with a variation of our prompt. And there you go, as you can see here, it created three other images. Uh, they're not really that good, uh, except the last one, which is actually pretty good, I would say, but not great. Um, that's unfortunately uh, the thing with all these AIs that it's still in development, I would say. Uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not as good. Um, it's really just a matter of luck. Uh, the thing is, is that DALI 2 is pretty expensive because each generation is around, I think, 13 cents. So you, you really need to be careful on how much you want to experiment. I think like, yeah, 115 credits is $15. So one credit is one generation. So, so $15 divided by 115 credits, basically one prompt is 13 cents. So when you have result like this, 
and you also and you need to redo it again and again and again i mean these 13 cents is gonna are gonna add up pretty pretty quickly i can tell you this much so be prepared to pay like 15 30 40 50 dollars a month just to be able to do a lot of uh, generation if you are a heavy user so uh, it's not gonna be cheap at the end of the month i can tell you this much and the second ai that we're gonna be taking a look at today is called mid journey and mid journey is probably my favorite one of the bunch because it has a different feel compared to the other AIs. Like it has a very different, very distinct style. Um, it's kind of difficult to, to really put into words, but as you can see here on the homepage, the kind of images that it can produce, which is are absolutely amazing. And um, it had a beta version a few days ago that really improved the quality of the image by a tremendous amount because it took some code from the third AI that we're going to be looking at today called Stable Diffusion. And this allowed users to create absolutely beautiful uh, images such as, uh, such as this one or this one. You can clearly tell that this was made by the new version, um, which is not available as of right now, but will be back in uh, a week or two. So one particularity with this AI is that currently it doesn't run in a separate website. It runs as a Discord bot. So it costs between $10 and $30 a month, which is not that expensive because it allows you to create an infinite amount of images. And I think that is also one of the reasons why people like it so much is because when you have an unlimited amount of uh, of tries, an unlimited amount of of images that you can generate, it really makes your um, creative juice flowing, and it allows you to create absolutely amazing images just by redoing it again and again and again and trying with different prompts. So this is really why I enjoy Mid Journey compared to the other ones. So the way it works is that you input a prompt and it will create four separate images. So if you like an image and you can click on it and then uh, you can, for example, create a variation of that image or you can create an upscale version and a, like a higher resolution version so that you can use for your wallpaper or for your project. And Mid Journey is currently the only AI that allows you to create high, res high resolution images of um, 16 by 9 and other um, ratio images uh, online because all the other AIs either create square images or a very low resolution images. So this is why I think a lot of people enjoy Mid Journey instead of the other twos. So one thing that is very interesting with Mid Journey, again compared to the other two, is that you don't necessarily need to give a lot of information to Mid Journey. Uh, Mid Journey has a very interesting creation process in the sense that it can comprehend complex concept and create an image around that concept. For example, if I say create me an image of solitude, for example. I'm gonna type solitude and I want a 16 by nine ratio image, okay, high quality. And as you can see here, just by putting the word solitude, it understood the concept behind the solitude and it created four different absolutely beautiful images of, you know, what solitude really is and represented by uh, some kind of single entity in the middle around a, a forest, around a mountain, a, a lake. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And each one of these images can be upscaled into a higher resolution that you can use as a wallpaper or as a, as, as a poster for print. And it's, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Um, this is not something that other AIs uh, do because you really need to tell them what exactly you want. I mean, as of right now, Mid Journey is the only one that creates those types of images, such an incredible image. It, it understands the concept behind solitude and create uh, like so, so many beautiful images just from a single prompt. And that's currently the only AI that is able to do stuff like this. So uh, for example, if you are a artist 
that needs to create an image, but you don't know where to start, you don't have an inspiration, I think Midjourney is by far the best one to uh, help you kind of um, create and give you ideas for your creation. So yeah, again, I really have a soft spot for Midjourney and it's only gonna get better with time. So the last and final one is called Stable Diffusion. Now Stable Diffusion is a little bit more complicated, is a little bit more peculiar compared to the other ones because Stable Diffusion is the only AI that is open source. Yes, that is an AI that you can use yourself for free. You can actually download the code for Stable Diffusion and you can use it on your own computer without paying a single cent. But the problem is that if you want to use the software on your computer, you're really going to need a very beefy graphics card with a high uh, VRAM. Uh, for example, I have a 1080 with, 10, uh, with 8 gigabytes and even I can barely run the, the software. I can run it with no problem, uh, but you know, if you have something more powerful than that, uh, I highly recommend. Now it's gonna get better with time, but as of right now, if you want to run it on your computer, you're really gonna need something very powerful to run it with. But one other solution that you can use as of right now is by going on their official website and using, uh, creating a, a new account, you're gonna have 200 generation for free. Now compared to Danny 2, the prices are actually very low. Um, I think it's around one cent per image. Uh, this time it, you're not paying by prompt, you're paying by the amount of image that you're generating. And you can see here all the different sliders that you can use to create your image. You can choose the width, the height, the COG scale, which is basically the amount of, um, which really, it says here, it adjusts how much the image will be like your prompt. Higher values keep your image closer to your prompt. So the higher the scale, the more closely the AI will try to create the image and will follow your prompt. Um, the steps is the amount of, um, it's kind of like the quality of your, of your finished image, but uh, you don't really need to to increase it that much i think the minimum that you might use is around 30. like i would say the default 50 steps is i think a very very good you don't need to do more you don't need to do less i think it's pretty a nice a nice medium and here you can choose the amount of images that you can generate up to nine and here you can choose the sampler but i highly recommend that you can just that you ju just stick with the the K, the K LMS. So basically just use the default values and uh, you can you can create absolutely amazing uh, images. So let's try to create an image using Stable Diffusion. And here I chose Futuristic Tokyo Street at Night and try to try, kind of emulate a uh, 3D effect. And let's create the image and see what kind of results we get. And wow, yeah, there you go. So as you can see here, these images are absolutely beautiful. You can of course load them on your computer. The, the real characteristic of Stable Diffusion is the fact that it is extremely powerful and extremely precise. Um, the only difference compared to, for example, Mid Journey is the fact that the images are a little bit more classic. Um, it doesn't really have the same impact of creativity. Uh, it doesn't really have the same creativity that Mid Journey get. It follows your prompt pretty closely and basically gives you the exact thing that you want. Um, but it still kind of has the same feeling and Mid Journey really create prompts that sometimes you might not think about uh, but you really enjoy and I think if you are a concept artist Mid Journey might be more interesting for you in probably way cheaper than Stable Diffusion but if you really need an image that is already made that is already created uh, but maybe it doesn't have the same artistic impact, well, you can use Stable Diffusion. Now, one thing that Stable Diffusion AI is the best at compared to the other AI is creating faces. So, for example, let's try to create uh, the portrait of a young man with swirly brown hair, green eyes, night beard, and a large rectangle glasses. Wow, I wonder who is this supposed to be? Okay. Let's try to create the image and see what kind of results we get. And there you go, look at the absolutely amazing images, the absolutely amazing results that we get with absolutely perfect 
a picture perfect portrait of of this young man with uh, basically exactly the problem that we 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 ask them to i mean you really see almost no uh, i mean this could be like an actual painting an actual portrait made by a uh, uh, a professional artist, maybe except the first one, which I don't know why it kind of screwed up a little bit, but the other three are just absolutely amazing. And this is really like the biggest strength um, of uh, stable diffusion is to create faces. So if you are an artist or if you need uh, a a face for a project, Stable Diffusion is by far the best at creating faces. So there you have it folks. So I will probably make a video about how you can install Stable Diffusion on your computer so you can use Stable Diffusion for free. Um, but if I have to summarize what we learned in this video, um, by far the most intricate one or the one that creates the more precise images is Stable Diffusion. The one that is the most creative is Midjourney and the one that has the functionality of erasing part of a picture to add an another one on top of it is DALI 2. So the best way to probably use this AI is probably combine one of these AIs together to create the finished image. I will probably make more videos around the same subject on how you can actually create better prompt image or you can create better prompt or you can create better images. So stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.